Hello and welcome back. It's been a while, but you know, I'm back now, so... In the last episode of this first-person survival shooter, we made our little health pickup, so that when our player is damaged, we can pick up our health and refill. In this episode, we'll be looking at finishing off this health pickup by destroying it after it's been picked up, and adding a few different visual elements to it. So we'll get on with that now. Okay, so the first thing we're going to want to do is find the pickup blueprint. So we'll go to the pickup blueprint, and to destroy it, it's very simple. We're just going to, after restore health, destroy actor, and we'll target ourselves. And we're just going to plug in the ammo and the double points and all that when we have those finished as well. So now. It destroys itself, but as you notice, the entire pickup base is gone, and I didn't even have any health. So that's why it's going to be a bit more difficult than just destroying the actor. Okay, so on our setup, as you can see, we set our static mesh to whatever this pickup was going to be. And the reason we did that was so that after we pick up our health and all that, we can despawn the pickup floating above the base to look like it's deactivated. So instead of having destroy actor, we're going to create a new function which we'll name deactivate. And what deactivate's going to do is it's going to get the pickup and set the static mesh of that pickup to nothing. So it's just going to say select asset, and if nothing's selected, it will select nothing. So I've got none. And then as you notice, we also made our material instance. And in the material instance, I'm going to get, I'm going to set vector parameter value, set vector parameter value on materials, pick up base. Okay, the reason we can't change it is we've actually got this set to material instance dynamic. Uh, sorry, material instance, when we want a material instance dynamic. So I'm going to change the variable type and index everything. And our dynamic material we're going to get and then set vector parameter value. So we need to find the pickup base material. And we need to find this emission color. So we'll see the name is called emit color. So we'll change this parameter name to emit color. Uh, you could also use it as a local variable, but I'm not going to. And I'm going to change this to a red. Make sure it's actually red. Compile. Go into my event graph and tell it to deactivate on pickup. Pick up the hell. And now you'll see our base has gone red and the material, the health, has disappeared. So now it looks like the base is deactivated after the pickup has been used, which is exactly what we want. Now we need to make it so that we can only pick up the health if the health needs to be picked up. In pickup, we're going to go to our restore health function and we're going to check if our player needs to pick up health. And we're actually going to want to return a boolean which we'll call picked up. So we're going to get a branch and we're going to call get player health from our player library and we're going to check if this integer player health is less than the max health integer and if that's true we will restore player health and we'll get a local variable be used, we'll call it. And we'll have to set this as needed. So if it's true, we'll set this to true and restore our player health. Otherwise, we will set it to false and just return to our output node. And then we will get our used, uh, used variable and return that. Now we're in our event graph, we're going to have to recall restore health. And we're going to get a branch. 
and we will go back to restore player health and instead of using this be used we'll create another variable called be picked or be used again and we will set this this way we don't need an output and we can call restore health and on our branch it will check if this was picked up in which case we will deactivate our we will deactivate our pickup so now when i run over this at full health we can't pick up our health destroy the enemy and now we can pick it up and it's deactivated and that works very well so the next thing we need to do is be able to reactivate it so we're going to create another function which will name activate rather than deactivate and I'm just going to copy the code I've got in this and bring it back here. And I'm going to set our static mesh to this static mesh here. And then I will change this color back to all blue. And I'm also going to change set picked up to false. And now we can reactivate our power up however we need to know when to reactivate it so this is when we're going to need a another variable and I'm going to call this f respawn and I'm going to set this to a float and I'm going to set this every frame equal to delta seconds plus f respawn and I'm going to check if f respawn is greater than or equal to and this is where you'd want another variable as you want a constant here k respawn time and if we set this to a value of 5 seconds if it's greater than or equal to 5 seconds then we want to reactivate our pickup and so in here we want to set f respawn back to zero now we don't want to keep adding this respawn time if it's never been picked up so before all this we want to get a branch statement that says if it's been picked up then we will do the respawn otherwise just ignore it so we're going to check this out first so i'm going to get damaged by my enemy and now i will pick up my health and we'll wait five seconds and now our health is back up and as you'll see our base is blue again and we could pick up the power up if needed so i'm going to clear up that function by add respawn time which will need an import of delta seconds as a float which an event graph will take all this we just made call add respawn time if this is true using delta seconds and that clears up that event tick and we're also going to add some rotation so I'm going to actually do one more function for this add rotation so I can add a local variable k rotation and to make it rotate every two seconds I'll need it to rotate 180 degrees a second we'll add relative rotation so we'll split this struct pin so we just get these float values and what we need to do is we need to rotate this every frame so we need an input of delta seconds again because we need to rotate sorry we need to multiply the time since the last frame by the amount we want to rotate in a second so this would now and it's a z we want to rotate so it turns now we'll just bring in our add rotation using delta seconds as our new parameter there don't know why it's called new parameter I need to compile it so I didn't compile it then meaning it didn't fully create this function properly 
And now when we play, you'll see our health can rotate round. I can get damaged by my enemy. I'll pick up my health. And the base is deactivated and we can no longer pick up health. And I'll show you that. Oh, well, I can pick up my health again. Get damaged. And now I can't pick up health, except I could. And the reason I could is because we didn't check if this is active. So, to simply do this, before we even check what our actor is, before we even care, we're going to want a final branch statement, which checks if we can actually pick it up. So, we're going to get a not statement. And we're using a not statement because you always want your statement to be for when it's true. So we're saying if it's not picked, so we could call this be picked up. So this is true when this is not true, then we want to pick everything up. Otherwise, you know, we can't pick up our health. So we'll take our health now, get damaged by the enemy, and now we can't pick up any more health until it respawns when we can pick up health again. And we would only be able to pick it up again when it respawns, but as we're at full health, we no longer can. So that is how we finish off our pickup for our health. We'll implement an ammo and score system as we go along, and in the next episode we'll begin making our ammo. So I hope to see you then. And as always, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more. Thanks guys. Bye.